Hi, I'm Hi. Jennifer Abshire. I run Abshire PR in Savannah, Georgia. Fantastic. And nice I'm a board member of the Creative Coast, so welcome oh, to Geek In. Cool. We're Thank glad you. you're here. I'm glad to be here. I'm sitting here talking to Greg Foster, who is, I believe, a serial entrepreneur, and yeah, I, I want to hear, and now a venture capitalist, and um, that's the type of person I admire and hope that you love Savannah and will invest in people and places here. We want you to love everything about here, right. but we're very glad you're here. And Thank tell you. us why you're here for Geek In. Um, because B. Ray and I went to Harvard Business School together and when she calls me, I take her calls and I say, yes, when do I come? So I was here last year, I spoke, um, and then she asked me to do it again this year. Great. So I love, and I love Savannah. We came down here as when I was a kid for every spring break. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So I really know the city well and always take the opportunity to come down here as much as I can. So hopefully you've seen we've, we're changing. It is amazing. It really is a transformation. Last year I noticed that, uh, I mean, it was just absolutely incredible the change that's made and what SCAD's done and what, what Creative Coast has been doing and so Great. very fun to watch. Well we're glad B found you for us. Yeah. Um, tell me what you're talking about. Well I spoke today on a panel that talked about pivoting. So within a business how do you think about your business model and when's the right time to pivot and how much capital do you need to be prepared to pivot that sort of thing and if someone doesn't know what pivot means tell them so what it is. you know when you start a business you have an idea or a hypothesis about what you think is going to create value not just for the client or the customer but enterprise value so when you exit or sell the company um, oftentimes I'd say most of the times um, the business model theory that you start with isn't you know, the one you end with, right? Mm -hmm. So the question always becomes, you know, when do you pivot? What's the trigger? What are, what are the, some of the triggers for that? How do you think about, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you think about the capital that you need to raise, right, to make that possible? Um, these sorts of things. And so we talked a lot about that and got pretty tactical. And uh, because I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs want. I mean, the high level stuff's interesting, but you can read that in a book. Um, you're one of several speakers that I've had the chance to talk to you today and a lot of the thing that's come through is to move toward entrepreneurial creation that is solving an answer rather than just creativity for creative sake. Right. Agree or disagree? Yeah, I mean I think, I think what you're saying, you know, a solution looking for a problem, right, doesn't tend to be nearly as successful as an identification of a significant problem. And providing and then, a solution. Yes. And so that's effectively, you know, my two ventures, that's what we, that's what we did. And then I, as a VC, I made some investments in companies, again, along those lines, or big significant problems, good entrepreneur who understood what that problem was, and then ultimately how to solve it and make a lot of money doing it. Well, I'd like to ask you a couple yeah. of questions on either side of the fence, sure. because one of the things that Savannah wants to grow is more venture capital interest. Yeah. We have some amazing creative yes. talent here yes. that we'd love to keep here or at least incubate and help them right. grow companies here in that region. Sure. What do we need to do to support them on a venture capitalist side? Well, I think the most important thing, frankly, are events like this, you know, and what I found is that um, Geekin in particular attracts a lot of very creative folks, which is great, and, you know, technology focused people. Um, you know, I, I would love to see, and I know B has definitely put her, her shoulder into this, trying to get more investors down yes, here. Yes. And I would suggest that, you know, a lot of the effort is to try to get Atlanta people down here. I would broaden that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of VCs in North Carolina that would love to come to Savannah. The draw is, you know, hey, have yes. a weekend here, yes. you know, have fun, bring your family, do whatever, but be here and be amongst the people. I think the other piece is getting folks to actually move or put a, a put a establish an office in Savannah. So it's sort of a that's um, sort of a pivot, if right, you will, it's a right? Pivot. Where you can say, well, you're in Atlanta, you may be at ATDC or you may be established or headquartered in a bigger city, but why not have your development or creative your creative and here. UX here? Right. It's a a less expensive city, yes. you know, there's just a lot of pluses. There's an airport that's easy to get to that now goes to a lot of places yeah. in the yeah. Northeast and other places. So, 
it's not as though it's it's inaccessible. That mm-hmm. long drive with a lot of wind chill time is, you know, yeah. not the best for a lot of people. But in reality, like I flew down here this morning. Yeah, easy. You know, it was just easy. Yeah. So, I think that's. Um, I think those are the big ones. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, success. You know, success is what it's gonna. There needs to be some exits. Yes. And so, some of these companies they get going but they don't, they don't scale well. And if they don't scale well, then they don't get you know, the kind of notoriety they need among mm-hmm. potential acquirers. Well, that walks right into my next question. As the um, CEO of a creative company, mm-hmm. entrepreneur or a geek who's starting that idea, yeah. who do they need to go to to help them basically make that pivot? Do, yeah. I, I would assume mentoring plays a key role in supporting that. No doubt. Because a lot of times you may not know as an entrepreneur that moment to pivot. Right. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, there's obvious, obviously a lot of uh, theory around, you know, how quickly do you bring in um, advisors and mentors and things of that nature. I'm a big fan of I often tell younger entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs that as opposed to starting out as an entrepreneur, go work for an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll learn more from that experience. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot of the minds not to hit, right? Exactly. And I think a lot of that's times... A good, that's really good advice. Yeah, especially for you know, young, young entrepreneurs straight out of college or mid-twenties or however you want to characterize it where they think, well, I've got this great idea, I want to go do it, I want to jump in, I've got the energy, the time, and I'll put the effort into it. Um, I'm sure you will, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, when I came out of business school, I went to work for Bill Nussie, and he ran IXL, then he ran Silver Pop, you know, one went public, one exited to IBM. I learned so much, so much from that experience. I, I, you know, my theories on how to be a CEO and how to run a business are essentially from his playbook. And how, where he got his playbook, I'm not totally sure, but it I'm works for of, you. Yeah, I'm I'm the beneficiary of that, so Good. I think that's important. Good. So, who's your favorite geek? My favorite geek in the world. In the world. In the world. Oh my goodness, does it, do they have to still be alive? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> um. Well, you know, my favorite geek is Pascal. I think Pascal was probably the most influential human being uh, with respect to sort of modern civilization and how we understand it Mm -hmm. um, of the last 1500 years. Cool. Um, I really do. I believe, I think he, you know, he really invented all of the basic principles that we take for granted today math- in mathematics and, and uh, I mean there's even a computer language named after him because he was the father of sort of designing at least the idea of a computer. Right. So I think he's probably my, f- and I never knew him obviously or wasn't a, a contemporary clearly of his but I mean he's just, uh, he's an amazing figure and he was 39 when he right, passed away amazing. I think. Yeah. so. I mean, he was very prolific in his day and age. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd say. Good. Any feedback you want to give us on Geek In now? I think it's fantastic. You know, I, I definitely think that, and I think B knows this, um, you know, trying to get some of these VCs um, down here, not going after the partners per se, you know, but getting some of the younger associates and VPs and some of the bigger firms. Just to get on the radar screen. Yeah, they need to get down here. They're all looking for deal flow. Mm -hmm. And people have a, uh, they have a misperception about VCs in terms of, you know, they think of VCs as the guy who gets to sit there and listen and say no. They think it's Shark Tank. Yeah, and in fact, (laughs) it's actually quite the opposite. The great deals you have to run after I only did real VC for about three years, and I was a corp dev VC for about three years, so about six years of my life. But the good deals, you know, you're going after them. You're on, you know, you're you're banging the phones to try to find the right deals, right? And you're always looking for sources of deals. And what's the spark in your gut that you see that is like, wow, I've, I, this is more interesting to me? What is? Yeah, well, I I think first, it, it's got to be it's got to be the person I look for. 
obviously, you know, intellectual horsepower, mm -hmm. just pure intelligence. I look for somebody who's fallen on their face at least once. So that means they are somewhat humble. That, that right. humility factor is huge. The other thing I look for, and I'm a, my background's media and marketing um, automation. I look for somebody who can, you know, walk into a room and not be a poser. You know, in other not words, they, they are who they are. They are who they are, and people in whatever industry they're playing in, they know who that person is. Like they are a real player. They're not trying to make. They're not making up right. what they're talking about. They really it's know very their authentic. Stuff. It's very authentic. Yeah. So that's the that's what okay. I look for. It's good. Scalability is one obviously that you you've got to look for because that again that contributes to enterprise value, and I think. That's a difficult one without a thorough review of the business model, but mm -hmm. early stage businesses don't oftentimes have mature business models. Right. That's why you're looking for you know that A player or two um, just, or three. Just the last question. Yeah. Um, if people hearing this podcast are from the region and they perhaps want to become an investor, yeah. what do you recommend for the for the you know there are people that. We're retiring in this area. Sure. We have a great senior executive retiree market in yep. this area. Um, and we have a pretty budding entrepreneur community. Yeah. Um, for someone who says, hey, maybe I'd like to be part of that, where yeah. would you direct them? You know, it's funny. Savannah has a similar ailment to a lot of cities in the South where money has been accumulated through old world, either be it manufacturing or real estate. Right. But these, these are folks that are willing to take some risk in their portfolio to invest, but they don't know how to do it, right? right? The state of Georgia has some really interesting resources, ATDC, GRA, where there are connections uh, to help extract interesting ideas, but also interpret those ideas to a potential investor. And I think oftentimes those folks don't get a lot of Play. No, you know, they don't. They're not. They're not very well known. True. I'd say those institutions aren't well known, and they need to be better, better known. And Georgia Tech obviously is a. I went to Georgia Tech, so I'm biased. But I mean, Georgia Tech is a great hub for that. Tech's doing more down mm -hmm. in the southern part of the state to try to do that as well. Um, but I, I, I really honestly believe that some of it is good fortune in mm -hmm. the sense that. The moment a deal comes out of Savannah in particular, but this region that really hits the, you know, hit, brings the bell, right. you know, that will be a call sign for a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. to come down here and spend more time down yeah, here. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Best is yet to come. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again. Thank I'm with you. Greg Foster, Jennifer Abshar. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Fun. You glad?